This is uh, the village where I grew up in. When I was growing up, we used kerosene lamps, the tin kerosene lamps, which have, in fact, an open flame. That's why I always wanted to use technology to solve problems that I was seeing. Ninety percent of Africa is still in the dark. Life for the school-going children in Africa could not be any tougher. Trying to study using firewood light is not an easy task. But for some lucky ones like Cedric in Western Kenya, a kerosene lamp comes in handy. But that comes with its own hazards. The smoke and fumes could lead to respiratory problems, while the inadequate light can cause eyesight complications. A kerosene lamp could also easily cause a fire. At dawn always follows darkness. Electrification all over urban and rural Africa is in top gear. But it will take ages before the needs for power and light are fully met. Lack of power means no economic activities, which translates to rural urban migration. The resulting brain drain from rural areas means that rural African children like Cedric still have to contend with conditions that prevail. But for those who abandon the rural areas for the lights in the cities, there are those who remember their childhood problems and return with solutions. One of those is Evans Wadongo. So this is uh, the village where I grew up in. Uh, this is uh, Malava in western part of Kenya. If you look at this village, this is, uh, this is the kind of setting you'll find in most rural villages, not just in Kenya, but in Africa. But the lifestyle is still the same. People they do subsistence farming and, and they don't get a lot of money. The main economic activity, as you can see, is sugarcane uh, growing which is not profitable to the people. They get uh, 100 shillings, 200 shillings per day, which they have to use to buy food, to buy kerosene, and to buy all their daily needs. You can see power lines passing here, but uh, this is power that is uh, being uh, imported from Uganda by the Kenyan government, so it has to go all the way to Nairobi. It doesn't benefit the local community here. When I was growing up, uh, we, we used to, to, have to we, we used kerosene lamps, the tin kerosene lamps, which have, in fact, an open flame. So with those ones, uh, you find that um, 
if you're living in a, in, we are, we are living in one house and then we use this tin kerosene lamp and it doesn't produce a lot of light and you have to put it very close to, to your eyes. Like Evans, many African children have had to endure simple lives. Walking to school and learning in rather simple, inadequate facilities. Cedric is a classic example. I am 15 years old. I'm in standard seven. For Cedric, the first of six children, education is the only ticket out of poverty. Therefore, any chance to ensure he studies well in school and out of school is welcome. His schedule is busy. After school, I go home. I give those poultry food and I pick rubbish in the combo. I give the kettle food. But when all is done, getting down to study with a regular lamp or koroboi was a major challenge for him. When I wake up, I fetch water, I milk, I cook tea, and I go to bed, wear my school uniform and come to school. When I come to school, early, I start revising my books, and when the teacher comes, I start learning. Eight million minus six million, uh, 270. Uh, the school does not have electricity, so uh, learning happens during the day and in the evening the kids have to go back home. And most of the kids here, they, they don't have electricity at home, so they, they have to use kerosene lamps at home. Earlier we have been giving assignments for them to do at home, but most of them were not completing. I've seen even my friends dropping out of school because of, uh, because they, they, they lacked kerosene in their homes and the teachers don't want to understand that you didn't have kerosene at home, so they, you get punished and yet it wasn't your mistake. And uh, it was uh, really frustrating. And even up to now, in most of the homes, kerosene is very expensive. People cannot afford it. That is what inspired me to be able to come up with Mangabora so that it can help uh, provide lighting in, in, the, in the home and uh, kids can be able to study using the Mangabora lamp. <laughs> Mwangabora is a Swahili word which means the good lamp. This lamp is made in a very simple way. The cardboard that we use in making our solar lanterns, uh, they are boxes that have been used for packaging. This is just recycling. We recycle them, uh, and then uh, we cut them into a piece that is used to hold our light emitting diodes. Uh, we also use uh, a white paper. Uh, these are some of the papers that already have been used. Uh, let's say they have pre been printed one side and the other side is still very clear. He puts the uh, light emitting diodes on the cardboard. Then uh, after that, uh, we connect uh, the wires. There is the putting of wires. These are connecting wires that will be connected to the batteries. So uh, positive goes on the positive, negative on the negative part of the light emitting diodes. There is soldering of the, uh, these wires. This is uh, to make sure that the wires don't come out when they are being connected on the circuit. After the soldering is done, uh, there is uh, insulation. Uh, we insulate these wires to make sure that there is no contact between uh, positive and negative. We use insulating tape. It is available in the market, cheaply available. Uh, one roll of the insulating tape uh, is worth uh, 20 shillings, Kenya shillings. We roll the insulated board. 
this is meant to put the LEDs at an angle so that when they'll be lighting, they light at angles. We make it round for, for it to light uh, the entire uh, circumference. Then uh, after, after rolling, uh, it is sticked together using uh, a sealant. So after that, we got drying. Uh, this is a finished one. It has already dried. It is connected on the frame together with the batteries. So uh, the LEDs that have been put on the board are now fixed on the frame. Then they'll be connected to the battery. This is the lamp that I invented. This is uh, one of the versions. So as you can see, I tried to make it very, very simple. And so that even uh, old grandmothers can be able to use it. Uh, this, the frame is made from scrap metals. These are just metals that are thrown away, like even when you crash your car. That's what you use to make the, the, the frame of the lamp. And here we have um, a solar panel, which is, uh, we get this from, um, these are recycled. Uh, this are uh, waste from the large manufacturers. That's what we were able to, to, to buy and use in making the, these lamps. And um, inside here, it has the, the light emitting diodes. And inside here, we have a battery. And it has a simple switch here. So it's just simply, when it's off like this, you put it on the sun. And at night, you put it on and uh, you can use it. The technology behind the lamp is simple. All the user needs to do is to expose the lamp to sunshine by placing it where direct rays will hit the solar panel. The panel will convert the rays into energy, which will be stored in the batteries. The batteries can hold up to six hours of electrical energy. A simple idea, but it's already having a huge impact. This uh, the experience I've had is that the, the people are doing well. You know, with these lights, uh, there is no smoke, so uh, children don't rub their eyes. You find that the eyes are okay. But some come when they use these uh, local lamps, the eyes have changed, they are red. You ask, they tell you, you are using firewood to study and so on. <laughs> Only 10% of the students in this school have the lamps, but judging from the huge improvement in their academic performance, the impact of the simple little lamp that Wadongo invented is a game changer. Place it here, it comes to 10. If you look at the difference that the lamps have made in this small number of students, it's so enormous. That is why we are striving and we are working hard to make sure that we increase the number of students in this school who are using the Mangabora lamps to at least, to, if we can be able to reach up at least 500 students in the next few months, it will be something that we will be happy with.
Wadongo's lighting solution goes beyond where he was born and raised. In the beautiful wildlife lands of northern Kenya, the lamp is a solution, but the cultural challenges have to be navigated rather skillfully. This is Maralal area. This is an area inhabited by the Samburu community. Uh, these are uh, mainly pastoralists, and their main economic activity is uh, livestock keeping. Nashaki is 15 years old. At this age, she should be in 11th or 12th grade, but she is only in third grade. While the other children enjoy a normal life in school, Nashaki spends her day looking after her father's goats. In her Samburu culture, she has to look after the animals, which are the wealth of her family. And for this task, it's usually the gifted and intelligent children, whether boys or girls, who are assigned this task, since they are smart enough not to lose the animals. In Nashaki's case, a compromise had to be made. Her father agreed to allow her to attend school, but only at night after bringing the animals home. And so, as Nashaki directs the goats into the pen and prepares for the evening, all is not lost. There is a way out. The shepherd's classes. She joins many other child shepherds like her who go to school at night. The first time I visited uh, this area, and, uh, it's a large area in these pastoral communities and I saw what was happening. I just felt like I had to do something. It's something that really, it's really unbelievable to, 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 if you look at the other kids who are going to school during the day and then this, these kids here who have to go to school at night like this. And this is an area that has wild animals. They have to walk home in this darkness here. We have combined two classes, the pastoralist class and the formal school class. Then we get our students beating these other ones. So it was a great thing to us because uh, we are happy that we are doing. We are taking sh short time, but we are getting just the same thing that uh, this other one. Or, or even we can beat them. <laughs> 
Nashaki has repaid this gesture by emerging top of her class, beating even the formerly schooled children. And Wadongo's simple lamp has been at the center of her success. The shepherd's classes have given children like Nashaki a rare chance at education. Wadongo's lamp is used to illuminate the classes during the lessons and as a torch because there are wild animals which could attack the children in the dark as they walk home. And when they get home, the solar lamps allow Nashaki and the other children more time to study. Nashaki's hopes and the light that the lamp has brought have made Wadongo a hero amongst the people. Every visit is celebrated with song and dance. The lamp is not only a solution for the school-going children, but it sets up a chain reaction for economic transformation. Here is how. The women in the community have saved quite a bit of money because they no longer have to buy kerosene. As a result, they are able to start different projects such as beekeeping, sweater sewing and fish farming. An average family spends about six to ten dollars a month on kerosene for lighting. When they receive the solar lamps, they are required to save this money and join hands with other women and start income generating activities like baking cakes, which they can then sell to individuals holding events such as weddings. But it goes beyond that. <laughs> Iyo itatusaidia kuleta pesa kwa kikundi. Pia vile tuko na maneno ya taa inaturahisisha hata kununua mafuta siku hizi wazee hawanunui na tunaona ni maendeleo. Hii taa uzuri wake. Vile tu umechaji hapo mchana. Mza saa moja kamili taa ika hapo tayari. Mza akiingia anapata light kwa nyumba na unatengeneza chai yako na keki. It is 
hizo taa zimetusaidia tukapata tuka mwangaza na hiyo mwangaza tunafanyia kazi nayo usiku hata kama hakuna mafuta kama kuna jua tunatumia jua kupitia kwa taa zetu tunafanya kazi ya mikono ya ushonaji At only 27 years, Evans' list of achievements reads like that of a world statesman. The CNN Heroes Award for Social Entrepreneur of the Year, the Mikhail Gorbachev Award, and now the Seed Award 2011. He has rubbed shoulders with world celebrities, and yet he is just a regular guy. But Wadongo's life is not all about the lamp and the communities it's impacting. He gets time to be with his family too. as a family on what, what he's doing because uh, we felt that nobody else had to come up with that kind of work. He used to play with funny things. Anything electrical was not going across him. Whether spoiled or in good condition, he, he liked joking with it and would spend a lot of time concentrating. After completing his degree uh, work, as a mother, I wish that he get employment. Then he said, no, I don't want to be employed. Let me develop my skill and do my own things, and I want to help the community. I like things that are more relaxed, uh, more <laughs> relaxed, something that you'll do with passion. And uh, that's why I always wanted to do, uh, to, to do, to use technology to solve problems that I was seeing. It doesn't make sense to me. However much you learn about something, then you sit in an office in New York or in, in wherever. And the same people, the problems that you are seeing, you are growing up with, they're still there. So specifically, I wanted to study, to, to be able to use knowledge to make a positive impact in, in the society. And uh, that's what I've, 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 I'm trying to do in a small way. A new dawn for technological innovation is here, and Evans Wadongo is at the head of this crop of young, resourceful and enterprising Africans, bringing hope and light to what used to be the dark continent. <laughs>